9 to 10 p.m. Monday night on Liffey Sounds. The world you don't know. The world you don't know. 9 to 10 p.m. Monday night on Liffey Sounds. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you're very welcome along to this week's edition of The World You Don't Know. Um, I'll do a little bit of a technical hitch there with um, a disclaimer that I, I, I play before the show. Um, I just want to reiterate, because you didn't actually hear the whole lot of it there, that the views expressed on this programme are the views of the presenters and the presenters alone, and not necessarily the views of Liffey Sound and, of course, the, the guests that will be on the show. Um, it's their views as well. And theirs alone are not Liffey Sound, so I just wanted to get that straight. Um, I don't know why it didn't uh, play. It should have played there, but unfortunately it didn't for some reason. But um, in saying that, we've got a great show lined up for you tonight. Now, I, I am trying to get Skype um, to boot up here for me. The computer's a little bit slow. And um, once I have Skype booted up, I have two guests coming on. I had a guest on a few couple of months ago. About two months ago now, I think, just before Christmas, in the end of November, beginning of December, I had a gentleman from Wexford Skywatch called Terry Lawton on the show. And Terry, um, he's a, a very active activist who's trying to bring to light the issue of geoengineering and weather modification, i.e. the chemtrail agenda. Now, for those who don't know what geoengineering is, geoengineering is the deliberate manipulation of weather systems, i.e. making it rain, making it not rain, etc., etc. Now, for those of you that don't believe that that is possible, well, I'll remind you of an interview I seen many, many moons ago, and it's on YouTube, um, and it was a, a lady from the UK called Tara Palmer Tompkinson. Now, I don't know if any of you, you would know who she was, but she's a socialite in the UK. She's a very, very wealthy person, a family are very wealthy, and someone considered them elite. But she was on at one of these um, panel shows. I don't know if you've seen the panel show yourself. Robbie. She I did, on, yeah, I've seen, I've seen She it. was on, on one of these panel shows and she was basically saying that um, her father paid a weather modification company X amount of money to make sure it didn't rain on the estate that they lived on on her 21st birthday, which was probably, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 years ago. I don't know how old she is now. To say that it's not possible, well, it's a bit of an understatement because well, apparently it is possible to, uh, to do this. To, to mess around with the weather. Uh, Robbie's looking for a password. I think if you type in the name of the thing, that should, yeah. that should get it up. Um, to, to think that it's not possible to mess around with the weather, well, it is. I mean, there's companies around the world who will modify the weather for you. They can they can make cloud, clouds um, produce rain by seeding the clouds with um, aluminium particulates or whatever else it is they decide to, to seed the clouds with. Now, whether this is all real or genuine, now is anybody's guess, but... Um, who knows? I mean, you never know. Maybe it could be real. But anyway, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to... Robbie, if you can do me a favour and get me up something on YouTube there, just a, a song to play. Just while I, I, I want to go into Skype and have a little bit of time to do so, I'm going to need about two or three minutes to get this sorted out. Um, unfortunately, as I said, the computers are a little bit slow tonight. I believe they had some problems with the computer system over the weekend, so it's not running 100%. And if anyone wants to donate a brand spank a new computer to Liffey Sound FM, our door is always open. So, you know, if you know anyone that doesn't want a brand new computer and you want to give it away, send it up to Liffey Sound and hopefully sort out a few things for them. But um, I'm going to play a song. What are you going to play there, Rob? You're going to play a bit of Bob Marley. Yeah, we're going to play Bob Marley and Buffalo Soldier. So I'm going to let that song play. And while that song is playing, um, I'm going to sort out Skype and we'll take it from there then. So if you just like to press play on that, Robbie, and we'll take it from there. Folks, we'll be back in about three minutes and hopefully I'll get my guests on and we'll take it from there then. Now, folks, I'm going to cut that song short because I do have both of my guests um, lined up and waiting on Skype. So I'm going to go straight to them. Good evening, gentlemen. Are you there? Yep. Good evening, Terry. Is this Terry or Rob? This is Rob. How are you doing, Rob? Good evening. You're very welcome along to the world you don't know. Thanks, thanks. Um, Terry, are you there as well? Just, uh, just here now, lads, yep. That's grand. I can hear you loud and clear. Right, so I suppose um, I would like to welcome both of you onto the show um, for a start. Um, I have been talking to both of you over the last few days. We've been having a, a fair bit of banter on Facebook, to say the least. Mm -hmm. So um, it's sort of handbags at dawn time, <laughs> as it were. Yeah. But um, I'll just reiterate to both of you, um, no matter how heated this gets, Keep your language to a minimum. Um, right. This is not FM 104, so 
and <laughs> keep it to a minimum. Let them, de- let them deal with all that sort of stuff. So I've got two guests on, folks. I've got Terry Lawton from Wexford Skywatch, and I've got a another gentleman then, um, Rob. What's your surname again, Rob? Billington. Billington. B- Rob, I- Rob Billington. I-N-G-C-O-I. I was going to say <laughs> Billington. Sorry, Rob Billington <laughs> and Terry Lawton. Now. Terry is an activist who's trying to make people aware of the geoengineering agenda that's going on around the world, i.e. the chemtrail agenda, as it's probably more commonly um, referred to. And Rob is on the other side of the fence who says there is no agenda going on, there's nothing been sprayed from the backs of planes. So I'm going to throw the floor over to yourself first, Terry. If you want to tell us a bit about yourself, what it is you're trying to highlight, and talk a little bit about geoengineering and basically put out your pitch. Radio, uh, well, I've been bringing awareness to... um atmospheric manipulation, otherwise known as chemtrails or um, climate engineering, uh, for about six years now. Um, I first heard about it um, when I saw a guy on, on the internet um, in a YouTube video. He was pointing up to the sky and he was talking about go- delivered, deliberate government uh, spraying of, um, using uh, commercial aircrafts to deliver the substances into the atmosphere. And um, I started looking into it. And uh, the more research I done, uh, the more real I found out it was. I uh, didn't want to believe that this is going on at first. Uh, nobody wants to believe that uh, they're being poisoned by their government. But um, you do any bit of research at all and you find out this is, this is a very real. Uh, this is very, it's very real. It's going on every day of our lives. Um, I, I live in Wexford here. Um, we're under one of the busiest airlines in the world. Um, we got jet trails pretty much every day blocking out the sun. Whenever you, that's whenever you can see this guy. Um, so, you know, there's, there's lots, there's like millions of people around the world now very, very uh, concerned about the, uh, the trails that are blocking out the sun and dramatically changing the climate. Um, we never had these trails in the, uh, in the early days of uh, commercial aviation. Um, of course, there is uh, there is such thing as, as a contrail. Um, you know, it'd last for 10 or 20 seconds, but uh, not, not the likes of the trails that we've seen now since the 1990s and the noughties and into the modern day. Uh, trails which are just uh, lingering all day, expanding out, blocking out the sun, completely obliterating the atmosphere. Um, I've got lots and lots of satellite image evidence of um, jet traffic just completely blocking out the sun completely all over Europe, all over the States, all over main, um, all, all over mainland uh, Europe, Asia, just pretty much all over the world. It's, this is a global program. And... Um, there's many reasons behind this. There's many agendas. Uh, weather manipulation is one. <coughs> um, control of the the um, control of the atmosphere means control. You control life. Uh, you control uh, the weather. Means you control food. You control seed production, and you control you control populations. You control people. So uh, to control the weather is um, it's the ultimate weapon, basically to. Uh, that you can use against uh, populations. So, um, and do you think, Terry, that that's what it is? That it is a weapon, like that? That's the reason it's been used for nefarious reasons. Or well, do you in think 1977 there was an, a treaty called the Enmod Treaty, and uh, this this uh, banned the use of weather as a weapon. Um, now, this treaty came about following the uh, the use of um, weather as a weapon in, um, in in Vietnam. The Americans used. Um, chemical spraying um, of, of silver iodide into the atmosphere to, to make it rain. They used it to swamp out the Ho Chi Minh Trail to uh, swamp a- out any supply routes. Just, what was it called? Well, that was, I think Oper- it was a different Operation chemical. Operation Popeye, that was. Okay. But it, it, it was on foot of that that a senator, in, a U.S. senator called Claiborne Powell in America, he, uh, he wanted to ban the use of weather as, uh, as, a, as a weapon. So the Enmod Treaty, the Envi- Environmental Modification Treaty, basically banned weather as a weapon. But uh, it didn't. We- it didn't ban it um, as a tool of um, economic control, basically. So um, yeah, it is a weapon. It's 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 the most powerful weapon. It's more powerful than nuclear weapons. You can bring a country to its knees if you can control weather. You can bring a hurricane to a country. You can um, swamp them out. You can you can dry them out, like we see in California. Now we got the biggest drought over there going on in uh, in, in 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 living memory over there. Uh, we had the worst flooding here uh, in, 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 in Ireland just before the Christmas. And I've got evidence, satellite image evidence, that those floods were engineered. We have massive cloud seeding operations taking place on the 3rd and 4th of December. We have massive ionospheric manipulation going on with use of um, mi- microwave and electromagnetic hardware like HARP, like Nexrad, 
like super darn which that which these facilities are are um, located throughout the, throughout the the globe there's a, a global network of these facilities and we, we've got we've got all the evidence and um you know there's there's, there's no doubt that our, their, that our climate is being engineered and uh, it is being used the weather is being used as a weapon and do you think that's going on in this country as well as elsewhere in the world Yep. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I see the chemtrails myself, if, if, just to give them a, a blanket term, you know, these trails that are coming from planes, I do see them being sprayed early in the morning, I do see them panning out then across the sky, and then, you know, it's a, it's a cloudy day, day then for the rest of the day, even during the summer when we had the, the odd clear day, they, they'd be out spraying, I have seen it. Now, Rob, um, do you want to come in there? Now, you, 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 you're from the angle that there's nothing being sprayed from aeroplanes. Well, I mean, clearly there is stuff being sprayed. I mean, it, it looks like there's stuff being sprayed. But do you want to come in now? I mean, you say yeah. that there is no agenda. Do you want to speak a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I think there's no solid evidence that anything has been sprayed at all, really. And also, like, I was wanting to discuss, um, Terry has uh, something called a chemtrail caravan. Yeah, I've seen that. And uh, uh, the reason I was actually introduced to Terry was because I seen this video that he had on YouTube where he was uh, interviewing some kids, which, you know, is illegal, Terry. You shouldn't really be doing that. But that's besides the point. But, um, you know, these, you know, these, all this cloud types, th these have been proven. There's Soviet cloud atlases from the early 1900s that have all these different types of clouds. This is, this has been proven a long time ago. This this isn't this is nothing new. And Terry was saying, Oh, you know, when I'm you know, when I was a kid I only remember eight or nine clouds or whatever it was. But, you know, these are general terms, you know, and then there's obviously subcategories of these things, so they're not going to you know like well, I mean, obviously they're not going to go into too much detail, if, especially if it's a school book. They're not going to go here's you know fifty th cloud types, whatever. There's the proof to the contrary. But can I can I um, can I interject? There's one thing I've noticed now, and, and, and I know you did say to the day that I would be biased, and, and I'll, I'll grant you that I am a little bit biased because I have done shows in the past, not with Terry, but with other guests where we do discuss chemtrails and uh, if there maybe there is or there isn't an agenda going on. I've listened to but, him, yeah. But one thing I have noticed myself, and I've done my research and I have looked into this quite intently, is that a lot of movies, old movies, like from the 70s and the 80s, mm -hmm. when they're being recut and re-edited, and what they are doing, and one movie in particular um, that I can draw your attention to, and it, it stands out quite a lot, and it is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Right. Now, there's a couple of scenes in that where you see the camera panning up to the sky, and it's a nice clear blue sky, what you would get in California or anywhere else in America, for that matter, during um, mm -hmm. good weather. But in the new version, the new digital version that was brought out on DVD, they've inserted chemtrails into it, and they're doing it with cartoons as well, they're doing it with lots of different TV programmes, and they are definitely doing it, I've seen that for myself. Yeah, that's correct. So you have to ask yourself, why are they doing that? Why are they trying to make it look like the chemtrails have always been here? When yeah, I remember a time when they weren't. You can see yeah. also in The Great Escape, uh, or sorry, The Italian Job. The right? Italian Job is another one I've seen it in, the, yes. The, ori the original film, when the coach is hanging over the yes. it's, it's a clear, pristine blue sky. Yep. In the uh, edited original. version, there is a big persistent jet trail sticking out like a sore thumb in the sky above. Now, mm -hmm. Rob, just to go back to what you were saying there, that uh, you, you, you were saying that it was a, it's illegal for what? You were saying it's illegal for, for me to... To record film, minors. To, what? Yeah. to record what? minors without consent. To re <clears throat> no, 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 no. I, I got consent off each and every one of them before I... Hit no, you have to get it off for parents. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, you do. No, 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 no. The, uh, illegal now. What's the difference in illegal and, and unlawful? It's, what would you tell against, me? Now, it's, it's against your consent, so... Oh, well, well, let me tell you, everything Hitler done was legal, right? So legal in my world means nothing, okay? So you can... What's you're right and wrong. Yourself, you? I talk about what's right and wrong. I'm out, uh, I'm out, I'm out uh, warning people that they're being sprayed from above. They have I a right realize to know. I've got and listen, no, hang on there, don't interrupt me. I didn't interrupt you. <laughs> now, I will go about this any way, shape or form that, and any mean, through any means that I deem appropriate. I asked those kids for prior consent. I filmed them. There's actually no perception of privacy in a public place. So don't tell me that it's against the law or it's illegal or anything like that. Okay? Sorry, now, secondly, more. the cloud atlas that you're referring to, the, there's, there's uh, the... Uh, World Meteorological Organization cloud atlas goes back to the 1820s. Now, there was something like 40 or 50 clouds originally in that, and it accumulated over the years. Now, but what we have since 2010 is a new NASA cloud chart, which has subcategories of already existing clouds, M4 alto cumulus, M5 alto cumulus, 
M2, Alto Cumulus. There's so many different subcategories. Now, these clouds did not exist in the past. How do we know this? Look to your old photographs. Use your memory. Look back to old films. Look around. Look now, past and present. See the massive changes that have taken place in the atmosphere. When I went to school, as I was pointing out to those kids, as when I went to school, there was nine clouds I was taught was, was, was uh, existing in the atmosphere. Now, kids are being brainwashed that there's 32 cloud types with the new NASA cloud chart. There's a massive change taking place, a massive change has taken place in the atmosphere, and there's a huge media concerted uh, effort to normalize these changes due to climate engineering and atmospheric programs. Now, of course, you will believe that there's nothing going on and there's no normalization going on because you probably believe everything you're told by the news and the television. No, that's not true at all, Terry. No, okay, that's well, not true at all. Okay, all right, okay. Well, have you done any research into what we're talking about here, Rob? Because you were saying that there's no evidence whatsoever to back up my claims. I'm going out in a caravan. I'm going around the Ke Somewhere. County Wexford. I plan on doing the country. You think I'm going around just some pie-in-the-sky conspiracy theorist for, for the good of my health, out warning people that they're being sprayed from up above. What, 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 kind of, what kind of benefit do you think or satisfaction a man to get out of that? What kind, I have nothing but facts on my side. Now, I want to hear facts from you. I have hours and hours of video evidence of airplanes coming into Irish airspace, committing biological, chemical and electromagnetic warfare upon the people of, of populations of this country, but not only the people, all life on this planet, on, not only in this country, this is global. We're being sprayed every day of our lives. I have any amount of evidence. I have rainwater evidence. I have rainwater I which shows it. high amounts of aluminium, 40 parts per billion. There should not be any ray, any aluminium in free form floating around in the air in a pristine, um, non-industrial environment like County Wexford. I live in a co country area. There shouldn't be aluminium. Now, I have a patent here called the Wellsback patent, going back to 1986, and it says that they will use, they, they plan on, in, in this patent, aluminium oxide is one of, the, one of the materials of choice, which is listed as a solar radiation management um, 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 material to block out the sun. Now, solar radiation management is what governments around the world now are proposing. I've been to three conferences, and th what they say is they're going to deploy solar radiation management to k protect us all from global warming. The idea is to spray reflective particles into the atmosphere via jet aircraft, to create an artificial cloud blanket around the planet and reflect the sun back out to space, hence cool the planet and mitigate global warming. Now, your government is proposing this. Now, whether you believe it or it's going on or not, you better understand that this is being proposed behind closed doors. And as, as Nicholas, Simon Nichols, Nicholas said, a psychopathic scientist from Australia, as he said at 2014 in the Berlin conference that I was at, he said, ultimately, the, de the decision to deploy solar radiation management will be made in the corridors of power. Now, you better understand that this is being proposed. Whether you believe it or not is not is another thing. I'm not trying to force anything on anybody. I'm just right, can I, um, in there. Can I now, jump in there now, Terry? I'm back up everything I'm saying. So you you better have facts to back no, up. I do, I do, Terry, but you're not letting me talk. So you right. accuse me of committing le illegal acts, okay? Well, you did, but that's, there's no need to get all shouty. Right, you know, listen, Terry, I'm, gonna, I'm going to... Shouty. I'm going to jump in there last before people start pulling their hair out because I do need to go to an ad break. Um, if anyone wants to text in um, in relation to what they're listening to, it's um, 087 062 7138. Gents, can you mute your microphone because I need to go to an ad break for two minutes. Um, I'm already running over time for the ad, so I'm going to be back in two, two and a half minutes, folks, with um, Rob and Terry, and we'll continue this debate. And when we do come back, I want to bring Rob back in, Terry, if you don't mind, if that's okay. So uh, I'll be back in two minutes, folks. Talk to us all very soon. Broadcasting to Lucan, this is Lippy Sound, 96.4 FM. Now, folks, you're very welcome back, lads. You're both very welcome back. Now, I have been getting text messages in. People have been sending texts in. Um, I got one text off um, someone called John. Um, good evening, John. Um, it, he's a, a relative of mine, actually. He's listening in. But he's just explained that a viewer sent an email into Mythbusters, the TV programme, to investigate countrails, and he wouldn't even investigate the issue. So, I mean, I'm not saying that says anything. You just sent in that text now. And another caller says, please let Rob speak. And I will. I'm going to bring Rob in now. But just before I do, the text number is 0870627138. Um... Terry, I just wanted to mention to you as well, in relation to what Rob was saying there about filming children and stuff like that, um, and consent, as far as I know, children under 18 can't give you their, their informed consent because they're under 18, and um, I just wanted to straighten that one out. But um, Rob, I want to bring you back in now. Do you um, want to come back in now with, with, with your argument? Well, you know, uh, Terry's mentioned aluminium in the environment and that he's not from an industrial town, but he 
he lives somewhere where there's actually soil and so aluminium is seven percent of soil so anywhere where there's wind anywhere where there's anything getting kicked up aluminium is going to get kicked in the air and i checked out terry's test results and i believe it was something like 37 to 39 ugl was it terry yeah yeah congratulations you've got normal results 200 is the limit so this is all stuff that you know this is this is normal levels and and this is naturally occurring Aluminium is a natural element. We use it in tin cans, we use it in soda cans, we use it in everything. So it gets mixed in with our drink, it's contaminated, it's everywhere. So we, can, if we say it's in our system, it is in our system. But it's in our system from pretty much every contaminant there is. So can, so I, can I ask you, Rob, um, are you of a belief that those who are running this planet, I mean, and I'm not talking about governments, because let's face it, right. governments do not run this planet. There's people right. above government who run this planet, you know, the, the money men, yeah. the real money men. Do you believe that they have our best intentions, you know, um, in mind, and that they're not trying to poison the population with crap in the food, crap in the water? I mean, our water has hydrofluorosilic acid in it, fluoride, yeah. you know, and there's no need to put fluoride. The government tell you that they put fluoride in because they want to enhance the, the, the health of the nation's teeth. And, I mean, look at the way the government have been raping this country. They're evicting people out of homes every other day in the courts. The government have, you know, sold this country down the river with this odious debt to these non-named bankers who nobody knows anything about. And we're expected to believe that they're putting fluoride in the water because they want our teeth to look the best that they can. The government really couldn't give a toss what your teeth look like. Let's face yeah, it. Well, I, I, I agree that, you know, I, I, I don't think that the people are always prioritised. Um, that's for sure. But I think um, you have to look at every sort of conspiracy or anything like that on a case-by-case basis. And chemtrails was just one that I could get, <laughs> get behind. You know what I mean? And, like, look... I admire t- Terry's enthusiasm. I mean, I wish I was that enthusiastic about something like this, but I, I'm not. I, I admire his passion. Right, can I ask you? I got a text in there now. Um, I've just received a text in. Terry is 100% right. It says, look at a video called Why in the World Are They Spraying? Now, there's actually two of them. There's yeah. a follow-up to that video. The goal is to reduce the world's population by using genetically modified seeds. The chemtrails would destroy the land. Sean and Mead. Thanks for that text. What's your reply to that, Rob? I have an answer that, for that, too. Huh? Um, I have an answer for that, too. Okay, um, go ahead. Well, so aluminium has always been a problem for plants, aluminium in the soil. This has been documented again for about 100 or more years. So what Monsanto and every other seed company in the world, by the way, not just Monsanto, what they, what, what they have all done is try to make an aluminium-resistant seed. And, and this has been something that's happened, to, and this has been something that's been going around for a long time. This is not... This is not because of chemtrails. This is documented before chemtrails that aluminium cause problems for plants anywhere with high aluminium concentrates, which can be anywhere in the world, really. It just depends on your soil. So that's uh, that's uh, dependent on whatever. So the whole Monsanto thing ties pretty neatly into it. Um, but, you know, the, oh. again, the, the other thing about Monsanto and their inge- agenda, the Monsanto that made Aged Orange are different from the Monsanto now. They're two different things. So, you know, I'm sure Terry knows about that. In what way do two but, different things? Explain. Well, they, well, they split uh, into two different companies. But, I mean, so they're the probably Mon- owned by the same parent corporation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I think they're lads. public. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you talked about the uh, safe levels, 200 parts per million, Rob. Yeah, uh, yeah. You probably got that from the EPA. The EPA um, stopped testing for aluminium in 2006. Did you know that? In the environment. Yeah, but yes. Now, so. now you, 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 aluminium is is the most abundant element in the soil, but it should not be floating around free form in in, in the air. Now, you talk to any re- reputable hydrogeologist like uh, Francis uh, Mengels uh, in the U.S. Uh, he worked for the uh, the, the, the U.S. Um, Department of Forestry and Agriculture for thirty years. Very experienced guy. He says that there should be no aluminium in the air whatsoever. Yes, in the soil, but not in the air, floating around free form. Now. Are you aware that uh, last year uh, the University of Kiel in, in the UK conducted studies all around the world on the bee populations of the planet? I was going to mention that, actually. now have aluminium in their brain cells. They have dementia. The bees have dementia. Now, the bees have dementia. This is, this is unprecedented. You're saying that aluminium has always been a problem for plant growth mm-hmm. and for in, in the soil. Can you explain to me why the alu- why al- bees have aluminium in the brain cells? Why uh, there was a, t- a study of a thousand whales done all around the planet uh, in 2010 by a team of uh, a- a scientists? Uh, wh- why why the why these whales were uh, found to have had exploding levels of aluminium in their systems? Now these these 
whales were tested in the most remote parts of the planet where there was yeah. how, how would you explain that and also there's there's now um <clears throat> a phenomenon amongst the pilot community an illness called uh, aerotoxic syndrome right and this this is this is caused by air contamination in the cabin now there's three british airways pilots a month on average this is just british airways pilots dying from aerotoxic syndrome it's one of the, another great cover-up that the media is doing a superb job on uh, keeping fr from the public. Can you explain to me what, what all these sudden changes in aluminium in the atmosphere are all about? And can you explain to me why the EPA stopped for check checking for aluminium in 2006? Well, if I was to make a suggestion as to why, they probably didn't see it as something that was of great importance. I mean, there is sort of a thing with, um, you know, aluminium tying in with Alzheimer's, which uh, you've mentioned before, like, because I've listened to the show before, I think it was mentioned on here. And, yeah, I have mentioned that before. There was, there was evidence of that, but there wasn't conclusive proof. So it was, while it was brought up that, yeah, you know, it can or might cause it, they didn't have any substantial proof to say, okay, you know, we need to worry about aluminium. So then, you know, when it comes to the bees and the whales and stuff, well, with whales and fish in particular, there's a lot of toxic byproduct being dumped into our oceans by factories, and we know that for an absolute fact. There's been a lot of great independent journalists that have actually, you know, taken pictures, and, and, and we've seen all this stuff happening. And this is actual evidence that I can get behind, and this is what I'm saying. I mean, I, I don't think that there's no problems, and I'm sitting on my couch having a right laugh. But what I'm saying is I think that the problems that we have, a lot of them are explainable in other ways, like I think fish with... With, with different problems with them. The plastics are a huge problem with fish these days. There's there's just a lot of different problems. Um, yeah. You know, and I've seen that Morgulin's disease was mentioned on the podcast before, and, you know, that that's something that really has more to do, in my opinion, with Lyme disease than it does with anything else, um, as opposed to chemtrails. Like, yeah. And this is why I never got behind chemtrails. I found it very wishy-washy, and I thought that it had a lot of overarching explanations that also conveniently tied into other conspiracy theories, which is why I never really got behind it. Right, so, um, can I just come in there, Rob? You can, uh, yeah. you jump in there, Terry. Like, um, how, how would you explain then, like, there's always been industry. Now, how would you explain a sudden spike since since 2010? 2010 was when the whale study was done. Scientists found that it was jaw-dropping amounts of levels of aluminium in, in the whales. Then, move forward four years to 2014, and then the bees have got dementia. Now, the bees have got dementia. This is a serious, serious problem. You know, the bees go, we go. It's massive colony collapse. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's collapse of the food chain. You know, we're in a serious, uh, we're, we're in a serious dilemma here. And, uh, you know, and, and like, d d would you have an explanation, like, where this, this sudden spike of aluminium is coming from? Because <coughs> the, in 2004, the, uh, the, uh, the, the Civil Aviation Authority in the UK carried out... Um, studies into uh, carried out an investigation into cabin air quality in airplanes and one of the peak materials found was aluminium aluminium oxide free form aluminium not bonded like you're talking about in the soil like the natural element unbonded floating around up at, at cruising altitude now what's what's aluminium doing floating around at cruising altitude Are you, you're telling me that's from industry aluminium um, falls sorry hang on there aluminium falls it's, pr it's pretty heavy stuff, even in, nano, even in nanoparticulate form. It's pretty heavy stuff. It doesn't float around for, for years on end up in the atmosphere. It has to come down eventually. So why is it constantly up there? There was extensive studies done, and it's, it's the peak material found up there. Can you explain that? Uh, in, in a cabin, well, I would uh, my just you know assumption or just thought would be that well the plane is made of metals um and you know like you said there's just well, it is a no, no this was coming from the air sorry lads it was coming into the but it would have to go through metal in 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 the cabin okay 50 percent of the air comes uh, is recycled from the cab cabin back in again and 50 percent of the air comes from the outside of the plane from from outside into the bleed air valve in in, in the uh, in the engine and in and into the into into the air conditioning so it's 50-50. And so wh where is all this? The aluminium sudden spike in 2004. You know, does that, the, 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 these components have always been made of certain metals, aluminium, as you're saying. So why all of a sudden, again, why all of a sudden the sudden spike? Well, I, I think that if they were spraying chemtrails from a plane, a commercial plane, that, like, uh, you know, 
if they had an air intake on the plane as well that was taken in air while they were spraying chemicals. But the chemicals are coming out the back of the plane, the air will come in the front. All right, okay. Well, in that case, then, my only explanation would be that it's already in the air, but I I don't, to be honest, I don't have an explanation for that. Okay, all right, Rob, so you were saying that there was no um, uh, evidence or no solid evidence to... to, to, uh, to say to suggest that what what were you saying to suggest that uh, that persistent jet trails or chemtrails don't exist or what are you saying are you saying that there's there's no experimentations going on up there is that what you're well, saying no no not at all I'm I'm sure there are experiments well, can, sorry, happening can you tell me I'm just wondering I'm I'm wanting to pick your brains here can you mm-hmm. tell me anything about your knowledge of atmospheric experimentations the history of it or the current uh, modern day um, activities going on up there do you have any idea. Yeah, no, I'm aware things happen up there, Terry. Well, You're trying to make it out. I no, no, just, I, I want to hear. No, 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 don't interrupt me. You're trying to make me out like I'm thick or something, Terry. No, 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 I'm not interrupting you. Hang but, on what I'm saying, but what I'm oh. saying to you is, Terry, that... Uh, because things happen and because things are discussed doesn't mean that they always happen and to assume that something always happens is is to sort of go you're going down a negative thought pattern there just because things have been discussed or things have been there's theories on things or people have tried out things it doesn't mean that they're always being done Okay. Like this, we know we know this. This has happened throughout history. There's been tons of different tests with people. You know, the army tested LSD on troops. That's one of the most famous ones. Everyone knows about that. But the army doesn't test LSD on troops all the time. At least we don't know because we have no evidence. Otherwise, we have evidence that it's been done at least once or twice. But we don't have evidence that it's been done all the time. That's and in important. in relation to clouds going on and off and been turned on and off, well, it, the reason that I would explain that and what I've seen is that it's just in different humidity changes is when this happens. Yeah. And that's my thing. And there's been contrail evidence for as long as 1944. And, and I mean, like, those videos, I mean, you've, I'm sure you've seen them. But there is a huge right. difference between a contrail yeah. and a chemtrail, I um, Rob. Yeah. There, right. I have to say, yeah. uh, I want to talk about today's um, um, ki- um, trails in the sky. I put up a post this morning. Um, lovely blue sky started out this morning. Uh, tra- planes were flying over, uh, as usual, very busy up there. And they were they were uh, they had um, pretty long trails coming from behind them, and um, I went on to um, University of Wyoming Atmospheric Sciences and I checked out the relative humidity. Now, why I checked out the relative humidity at cruising altitude today is because for a contrail to form, you need you need very discrete conditions. First of all, the plane has to be above twenty six thousand feet. Secondly, the uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, temperature has to be below minus thirty six. And thirdly, the relative humidity in the atmosphere must be, must be above 60%. Now, I checked the relative humidity today from the Valencia Observatory in Kerry, and the relative humidity today at cruising altitude was only 7%. Now, this is the Met Office's, the UK Met Office's own data I'm, I'm referring to, not my data, the UK Met Office's data. Now, what we were seeing today was not condensation trails, it was a chemical attack on the populations of this country. Not not vapour. Conclusive evidence, not vapour. Right, can I um, um, come in? I do need to go to a break, class, so I need to get you to pause just for another two minutes because I have to play the ads. Um, so if you don't mind muting your mics for another two minutes and we'll have about 10 or 15 minutes left. But before I do go, I just want to read out one more text. Um, it's from Sean again in Maid. He says, all part of the New World Order. The US did it in Vietnam with Agent Orange and Project Popeye. The other guest, Rob, is clearly a sheep. This is um, this guy's <laughs> opinion, Rob, not mine. He says the climate change... He actually says dumb sheep. He says the climate change scam is being pushed as another agenda to control people more. And uh, lastly, Terry may like to refer to Dane Whittington's or Wigging, Whittington's site, Whittington. geoengineeringwatch.com. That's from Sean and Maid. And I just want to point out, before I do go to a break, the two points I want to make. Um, I spent a couple of years in Wexford, uh, a couple of years ago, a, a couple of weekends in Wexford, should I say, and I was down fishing on the beach early in the morning. And one thing I did notice, and you can say I'm biased, all, you know, if you, if you like, Rob, but this is something I've witnessed with my own eyes. On the beach, I've seen a plane coming in from the direction of the UK, coming across the Irish Sea, and there was nothing coming out of the back of it. There was no contrail, no chemtrail, nothing. But as soon as it was above my head and above the beach, the coastline, he switched them on. Now, to me, that sounds like something deliberate. It wasn't 
that he changed his altitude or anything like that or the air conditions changed he switched something on and a, a, a clear spray was coming from the back of the plane now also another thing I just want to point out before I do go to break I read an article last week um, I'm not sure what paper it was in it was on one of the online newspapers the Irish ones I think it might have been the Independent um, that scientists here are getting worried that Irish people are suffering extremely low levels of vitamin, vitamin D, D yeah. and I can't help thinking well the fact that our skies are being sprayed on a daily basis and the sun is being blocked out we're not getting enough sun in this country and it's not because the sun is not shining it's because it's been blocked out mm. you know so if you want to ponder over that thought for the next couple of minutes while I go to break um, we'll be back in two minutes folks with Terry and Rob talk to you all very shortly Local programs, local presenters, local news. Tune to Lucky Sound 96.4 FM. Now, folks, you're very welcome back. Lads, you still with me? Yep. Yeah, right, that's great. Um, Robbie just wants to say something there. He wants to jump in. He's my um, co-host. Robbie, jump in there. Lads, how are you? Um, Robbie and Terry, um, yesterday there, now, I put a couple of posts up on uh, anti geoengineering in Facebook Ireland. Now, myself... I do watch what's going on, um, you know, I have a camera, I like taking photographs, and over the years I've noticed a change in the sky, and I've noticed sunsets are not the same. Now, uh, last year I had a video camera out on beautiful evenings, and I was looking, you know, in the direction of the sunset, and, you know, I, I have it up there on, on, on my own uh, YouTube account of these planes coming over, crisscrossing the sky with this fantastic sunset, and it's just mixing up the sky and you're getting nearly purple colours and reds you know along with the orange sunset and then yesterday was another perfect example I, I woke up at about nine o'clock yesterday morning I looked straight up and you could see that dirty haze in the sky and then throughout the day it got thicker and thicker and then yesterday evening I took a couple of photographs and it was it was it was uncanny it was these massive waves like going through the sky and as I know, it'd be probably, you know, uh, electric magnetic uh, pulses going through the sky. Um, that was all last night as well, and it was the same this morning. But when I grew up um, there, oh, sorry, there this morning, it was just murky uh, white clouds. Now, there's obviously something going on if you have these stages, you know, the day beforehand, where you're getting clear skies, then you're getting um, murky skies, and then you're getting waves in the skies, and then the following day, you have nothing but blanket cover. And we had a little bit of break in the clouds today, and you could actually see through the clouds the chemtrails. Now, I just want to throw that at yourself, Robbie. You know, what's the agenda of blocking out the, the sun? Is it to kill the earth because of global warming? Do you believe in global warming or um, climate change? Is it, do you think there's any kind of a hoax there? Climate change. I believe in climate change. I think that is a naturally occurring thing. There's evidence of floods since dinosaur times there's evidence of climate change since that far back we have geological records to prove it um so i mean i think talking about the weather in ireland to be frank we've never had good weather it's always been cloudy it has always been cloudy it's always been gray and we can talk about what we remember in the past it's like when i was a kid oh i remember these warm summers but you remember everything uh, amplified when you're a child your good memories are amp amplified not true, not, not true. Uh, i i think it is terry but so then you know i wanted to ask terry one point before i go because we don't have much time and i i wanted to know his stance on the um what he calls a delivery pipe but a drainage pylon because i seen i seen on the boeing 737s i seen he had uploaded a video about it i actually stumbled across this terry it was kind of funny and um I seen that someone made a great comment and you never responded to it, so I was sort of one. I don't respond to shields. Uh, okay, well, I doubt he's making any money by posting. No, a I don't waste on any YouTube. time with him. Okay, but I would like to know your stance because it would enhance my knowledge if you could explain what your take is it's on it. It's all in. It's all in the video, Rob. You've saw the video, so go back and look at it again. Now I'm not going to waste any of the rest of the show talking about delivery pipe. It's all there in that video. It's a drain pipe, according to Boeing seven three seven. Um, the, the uh, manufacturers of the engine. It's a drain pipe for hydraulic for hydraulic uh, oils mm -hmm. and uh, for any fuels that may collect in the fairing. So basically, they're telling us they're dumping fuels on us. Now, I want to go back to what you were talking about there, uh, lads. About um, about you you were talking about the vitamin D. Uh, yeah, that was just yeah. a report that I read that, in the newspaper last week. To, to, to me, this whole thing about the whole circular argument of is it a chemtrail is it a contrail it kind of gets us nowhere the fact is let's just say there's nothing sinister in these there's nothing sinister in these trails let's just say it is innocuous water vapor or ice crystals or hydrocarbons let's just say that 
The fact is, NASA have admitted since 1996, jet trails are blocking out the sun and they are changing the climate. Now, this phenomenon is known as global dimming. Now, right now, we're living in the, the, the biggest mass extinction period since the dinosaurs died out. We're living in the sixth great extinction. Now, 70, two, 200 species of plants, mammals, animals, birds and insects are becoming extinct every 24 hours. That's a fact, every 24 hours. Now, 70% of those extinctions are fungal related due to the damp, dark conditions being caused by global dimming. Now, whether they're contrails, whether they're chemtrails, it doesn't matter. The fact is that jet traffic is blocking out the sun. Now, all diseases, all diseases are vitamin D deficiency related. We are a dying species. Not only us, the spe every species on the planet is becoming extinct slowly because of the darkening of the skies. Can that I ask you? That's, 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 that's so serious, lads. Just the fact that the sun has been blocked out. Can I ask you, Terry, though, if that is the case, that they, there's, there's an agenda to kill off most species of life on this planet, what's the point? Exactly. You know, what was the point in setting off, you know, detonating 1,500 nuclear bombs in, in the North Pole and South Pole, you know, since, since World War II? What, you know, why not? You know, when you got that kind of power, you, you're, you're a psychopath. No, my, my, my question to you, Terry, was, if, if, if this is the agenda that they are trying to kill us off, why are they doing this? What's the point? What well, they got well, the game by getting rid of all life on the planet? Well, if they're only going to leave, leave an empty rock for no one to live on? Exactly, you know what I mean? Like, I, I can't think of that mindset, lads. I can only imagine that they want to plan it for themselves and they want all of us out of here, man, you know? Well, I know, I know myself now, like, uh, the population of the planet is 7.2 billion at the moment. Go back 100 years, 115 years ago, it was only 1 billion. So there is a sevenfold increase in the population. Now you could imagine in 20 years' time, 30 years' time, you know, there's going to be, you know, a swell of people, you know, they're yeah. not going to be able to sustain food, exactly. uh, water, etc. Um, because it's not being managed right. Exactly. Well, that's and what that's it is. I mean, you can drive from like here to Welshford, there's tons of land out there. There's, yeah. Yeah. It's, there's no yeah, shortage yeah, of land. Like, wh wh whether the extinctions are accidental or, 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 or deliberate, whatever, the fact is that it's happening. And we need to address what the cause is. And that's why I'm out in the streets. I can't okay. prove that everything is being killed off by what I'm talking about. But by the, the, the genetically modified foods, there's, there's vaccinations, there's fluoridated water. We've been just, everything has been weaponized. The air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, the vaccines that are put into our children. Everything has been weaponized. We're living, we're living in, 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 in a vibrational prison and an absolute toxic uh, a toxic laboratory. We're just being used as guinea pigs. So, we, we like m my point is, we need to come together and understand who the enemy is here. You know, whether whether it's deliberate or whether it's not, we we need to understand what's going on, who is in control of things, and you know, we need to have a, a, a good, like a good healthy debate about like what what is what what are we going to do about this? You know, so S sorry, yeah. Um, uh, sorry to cover you there, Teddy. Rob, just um, on the final note before we go. You know, yourself, like, I'm sure you have some doubts about, you know, how the planet is being managed in, in a way. Course. You know, like, do you want to air any any um, grievances you have regarding, you know, uh, yeah. the problems that is out there? You know, yeah. just to coincide with what Terry could say. Yeah. Well, I'd, firstly, before we go, like, before it ends or whatever, I'd like to say thanks to Terry for coming on and actually debating. It was uh, nice of man to give me a chance. Thanks to you guys, too. But, yeah, no problem. Um, yeah. Like... What I think is, I don't think it's the government's agenda to kill off people. I don't think that makes sense. Governments and organizations want expansion. And right now, we're still in expansion. There's still room to expand. And I think they want to expand, 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 maximize, maximize, maximize. And then I think that they're that egotistical that they will worry about that once they get to it. They'll worry about all this stuff after the fact. I mean, if you look at it, you know, California, water shortages, Flint, um, Michigan, I think it is, yeah. water poisoning. Um, and they're trying to do things to save them right now. I mean, I think if the government were trying to, like, you know, save the environment or prevent global warming, we'd know about it. I think that they would say to us that they were doing it, because why wouldn't they? I just think that to kill everyone off is against their agenda. I don't think it makes sense. I think that, and that's why I never really got into the chemtrails thing was because I just, I don't think that just doesn't make sense to me. And if they wanted to poison us, there's so many easier ways to do it. I mean, you mentioned fluoride and water, food, that's, that's... But you don't have to drink the water, you don't have to eat the food. Did, did you ever hear the term gaslighting, Rob? 
uh, gaslighting, though. Yeah, turning the lights down slowly. Yeah. Well, it's, like it's, the frog in the pot. it's like the frog in the pot, lads. Can yeah. I just say there that, you know, no, look at, we're, we're, we're saying people on this uh, on on this chat here, like, we're, the, the, do you know, like, these, these we're talking about psychopathic people. We could never get into the heads of these people because the psychopathic, they don't have any empathy that's for true. the fellow creatures. Yeah, that's pretty so true. The, but the governments, the whole thing about governments wouldn't do this or there'd be no reason to do that. That kind of that's that kind of doesn't really hold weight because you see the governments are only carrying out the agenda of the men behind the curtain. Yeah. You know the psychopathic, you know the invisible empire, and you know we we need to identify th th these people and expose them. And uh, you know there's there, like why why would <laughs> you know like the EPA operatives and all these people like you know that like why would they uh, go along with this agenda if people wonder like and you know they got good pay packets like they're well paid and they've been given a script like you know they're 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 compartmentalized yeah. and they're they're only working on a need to know basis they don't know they don't necessarily know the, the the overall big agenda it's like the manhattan project you know the project to build the atomic bomb yeah. was, uh, no one knew about it until they dropped working them. on that and you know like very few of them there was only a handful of them that actually knew what the end result was yeah. going to be compartmentalization so that's, that's a perfect example of compartmentalization yeah. Yeah. and that's what we're dealing with now in the 21st century it's much more sophisticated now it's just, we have the media there to keep everybody calm as we're being exterminated we've got duncan stewart and all his cohorts up on rte and they're doing these shows on air pollution and all oh, the air pollution uh, by the way air pollution is the biggest health risk on the planet now and duncan stewart and all the, the, the all the all the cohorts they're putting out all this information that coal emissions and car emissions are the cause of the air pollution but alzheimer's is off the charts d d dementia is off the charts and they're all caused by aluminium in the brain cells you know it's pretty simple it's a one and one equals two equation yeah. and we got asthma off the charts 470,000 people in the country have it now and they're all being told us just to do coal emissions and oh, we're going to put monitoring stations around the country now and you can have an app on your phone and you can you can you can get a, a lowdown on the, the the air quality in your area when you're having an attack and all this, an asthma yeah. attack and all this it's, it's, gone, it's, it's, gone complete, nuts, it's yeah. complete just calming of the population right, well, just to get us comfortable with our extermination massive agenda and as i talked about in that video it's a continuity of hitler it's a continuity of stalin the thing is about this these modern day tyrants would make Hitler and Stalin look like choir boys. Right. But Terry, I think, I think I the call of day there now, Terry. Yeah. Terry, I have run out of time, unfortunately. I have a couple of texts I want to read out to the boaters before I do go. And um, one of them came in a few minutes ago. What's to say that the original movies didn't superimpose blue skies for the Hollywood effect? Mm -hmm. I.e. it was chemtrails back then and the new movies have the original skies filmed. Mm -hmm. Plus the resolution of TVs back in the day wouldn't be good enough yeah. to see them even without modification. I don't really buy that myself now, but I don't know what you both think about that. But I've got one more text that I want to read out. Um, and it's from... It's from my good friend Ray Moore over in England. I need to find the text, so if you just bear with me for a second, lads. And I shall find it if I can find Skype. Yeah, there it is. There, um, Ray says the difference between, and this is a bit funny, lads. This is just a poke at the periods. The difference between the two guests the one who knows chemtrails are real would kick the elephant in the room up the arse, and the other one would happily spend his life stepping around it. So take that whatever way you want, lads. Oh, I'm so offended. <laughs> 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 Rob, uh, I, I wasn't yep. trying to make an easy or you whatsoever. I totally respect you for coming on the show. Thanks a million. Yeah, well, I respect you, Paul. Well, lads, unfortunately, I've run out of time, so I'm going to have to cut you off, unfortunately. That's it is a great talking to you. See you guys. Thanks, Listen, for thanks very much for coming on. I'll talk to you all about again very soon. Thanks sure. very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that was Rob um, and Terry Billington and Terry Lawton from Wexford Skywatch. A good bit of a debate there. Um, I think it went quite well. But unfortunately, I have run out of time. I was going to play uh, Terry's little song. I'm going to finish the show on his little song. It's a chemtrail song, one hand in my pocket. It's got his own lyrics in it. So I'll just play that out. And unfortunately, it's only going to be on for a minute. So until next week, folks, this has been The World You Don't Know. I hope you enjoyed the show. And I'll talk to you all again very soon. Good night. I wake up in the morning and I take a look outside And the sky is like a not so bored I'm sad, I'm not laughing I'm sick and I'm hopping mad I'm screaming from the rooftop Mayday, guess what it all comes down to Is that every living thing is being sprayed, sprayed, sprayed and I've got one hand in my pocket And the other one's pointing at the chemtrails I go out and as I'm walking 
This sun's being blocked out And the birds, they have all stopped tweeting And eeriness comes upon me As the particles fall down I'm jumping around frustrated Cause what it all comes down to Is that everything is just not alright Cause I've got one hand in my pocket And the other one's pointing at the chemtrails Look up at the sky. 